first of all, welcome again, and uh, uh, it was a really great to see so many guests here, and uh, we can share our common view and uh, see how we can help our patients. And you can see how the new local facility grows in the last five years, and our growth rate is really great. So I think, as Dr. Silva said, it's no secret. You do what's the best for the patient, and that's all about. And you can see our volume now is uh, about 4,000 retrievals this year, and the retrieval cycles now is uh, our cycle is number one in the New York City. It's more than Cornell University and NYU University. So this is a good news, and I just learned it yesterday. Welcome to New York. <laughs> so I think I don't need to go through all this. I think Dr. Silver already went through all this. I just want to, basically I just want to uh, emphasize our philosophy and our protocol. So I just want to get into the right to get on the point. Our really uh, interesting cycle now is a natural cycle with a time intercourse, and we can stretch a little bit of time intercourse into uh, individual fertilization. So we always uh, kind of remind our patients that uh, when we say natural cycle, that now means to go home and sex, that's great. And uh, when we say natural cycle, also means we can take your egg out to in vitro fertilization. So patients always, uh, like this kind of idea, but uh, they usually being brainwashed by all the dust. If you want to go for IVF, that means you need to get lots of shots. That means you may have multiple pregnancies. That's not the case with us. Can you, can you set up some animations, some good animations? So I just want to show that uh, um, the protocol about our minimal simulation. Just want to make some uh, comparison. So this is the size uh, slides you can see. The conventional idea is really is harmful to your ovaries and uh, with a patient with a very very high FSH I'm not going to get too much technical details so the whole idea when the patient has very very limited ovarian reserve or with very very advanced maternal age but we never see our female patients are old when in New York City we have to be very critically incorrect and which is true all our female patients are like a burgundy red wines they're getting better with time. I never said women get getting old, when they're getting more and more mature. And however, when they're getting more and more mature, their ovaries starting to take a break and want to take a retirement. So that's why you push them hard with more and more medicine, it's just against the nature. So that's why for this kind of patient, the best option is really, really uh, going through uh, natural side. No drugs, or as a Dr. Silver probably mentioned already, going through this uh, very, very uh, gentle, uh, stimulations. So, what I really want to mention in one patient's story is that it was very, as you can see, we keep talking about the uh, high FSH. The high FSH usually means you don't make many, many eggs. And eggs, you may not know, but in our field, and uh, it's a Bible, it's written in the, all the uh, scientific uh, books saying that. Um, if your FSH is higher than 15, you should all looking for a donor, which is absolutely not the case in our center. We treat many, many patients with FSH more than 35. Have one child or two children. So, and when patients are usually very religious, we're asking your opinions. What should I do my FSH is high? I usually tell the patient, just this morning I just saw a couple of patients from Boston. I said, forget about the FSH. FSH is not important. It's your age, but you have regular period. You have a regular period, you're making it. It's all about, don't even mention about the FSH. So this is uh, really, really very important. I'm just gonna skip all these slides and uh, just see what I can to show. This is, okay. This is a patient, probably to our knowledge, is the oldest uh, uh, patient, a live birth baby, uh, with uh, her own legs. And she conceived at age of 48, and she delivered at 49. So, as uh, you may know, if you're calling to the any major IVF centers, which we were told us saying, if a patient is aged 43 or old and they decide want to get pregnant with their own leg, don't take them as a new patient because we do treat anybody more than 43 years old trying to get pregnant with their own eggs. That's how I was trained when I was a fellow in the big institutions. 
So this is really to prove that uh, yeah, even for the end, they can have a life birth vector idea um, using natural cycle idea. Okay, I just want to show um, some cool animation. We spent two years to make, and I, if you, uh, if you guys each to show it to your clients, or so I could be, I'll be more than happy to give you this animation, so you really can educate your uh, friends on how this goes. This actually to show how the follicle grow in the ovaries, and it's really really cool. But when you enjoy this slide, I just want to. Um, tell the mini idea. So what's the real difference be between our approach and the conventional approach is really instead of looking for as many eggs as possible, about 15 eggs from each patient, we're really only asking looking for three or four eggs. That's one difference between conventional or minimal stimulation. This is the sperm looking for the egg. It's like a James Bond movie. <laughs> and the uh, second difference between conventional idea for the mini idea is uh, it's really very easy on the female's body. You don't take so much chemicals. And it's really, really, really organic. It's really an organic approach. So, uh, you see, men's always very excited, and uh, so we search so. soap. The egg fertilized. Now the two new joint become full cell bleeding. So, second part of the mini IV different from conventional IV, it's just more natural, more organic. And third part is, it's safe. You don't have hyper stimulation. You don't have multiple pregnancies. You don't have ovarian torsion. You don't go to the hospital. And so overall, save the, save the cost to the community because you don't produce so many complications. So as I always discuss with Dr. Sil, when you discuss about the cost of IVF, it's not the IVF per se. When you create so much complications, when you deal with these complications, this also costs money. So this is a really awesome point. I just want to show the uh, ICSI procedures. Now, I just want to mention is that we're really going through a very organic, we're not only our approach is organic, even the treatment is very organic. You know, we saw, uh, from time to time, we do see uh, the patient who really don't like the idea of collecting sperm um, by masturbation. So, we just to give patient very convenient approach, which is do the post coital sperm collection from cervix before we do egg retrieval. So the patient doesn't really need to go crazy to try to find the sperm for the in vitro fertilization. Because we have to do retrieval, we're going to get access to the uh, patient's cervix anyway. So we just do a simple sperm flushing. You don't need post a to test all the time looking for sperm. So see, this is a very uh, organic approach. Anybody know what the just showed in the animation? I'm sure you all know it, right? It's a sperm injection. Can you show others? It's the same because you only the one good sperm. Actually, the best sperm because only the good sperm still stay in the cervix. And so you basically, the mother nature they finish the sperm wash for you. So you really don't need to do anything. So we say, well, if it works, don't break, don't fix it. And if the wheels work, you don't need to reinvent the wheels. So why would I have to clean sperm and do the wash? No matter how you do, because I know you know we wash our sperm get natural fertilization for last million years and including so it's really working very well and uh, for this reason just for this reason we get many patients came to us not they don't even know you do mini idea they don't even know when you do anything different they only came here for a very simple reason the husband don't want to do masturbation so that's we get a lot of patients so at what stage do you do the transfer blastocyst uh usually we do blastocyst to transfer because we really want to make sure the embryo going to transfer uh these in the embryos and we don't want to transfer, um, so do you want to make sure the embryo transfer will have a better chance to get pregnant? Since we talk about embryo transfer, I do want to show embryo transfer. This three-dimensional uh, animation is really... What, what day is that in? <laughs> typically five days after the treatment. And the patient like to see this, you know, you, you talk about what happened, and they still don't what you're talking about, but when you show that uh, image, and they really, really like the idea. And another important thing with the gentle stimulation is that that will give patient a chance to try one more time. With conventional IVF, the drop rate is 40%. After one or two conventional IVF site, 40% of patients don't come. Not because they don't have the money, it's just too detrimental. One more, then you can. I just want to show you 
one part of the revolutionized the whole procedure, the all sides freedom. We just show the vitrification, the new technique that we use is bring out the temperature from 37 degrees to minus 196 degrees within one set, which is in sharp contrast to the so-called slow freedom, which is the old-fashioned method, which is reduce the temperature 0 0.03 per second. So this is the completely different. So there are lots of exchanges going on. This will take the water molecule out and put in the crowd protect. That's the first step. Then you do the bring on temperature really, really fast. So the egg won't have any chance to um, have the ice formation, which causes the damage to the egg. The ice is made of the crystals. So this just shows the way the OK, so my talk will finish. Yeah. And I have actually 20 seconds I can donate it to David. And I have to say that was a Jewish two minutes. <laughs>